Hello everyone, welcome back to our Rhino tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to build those Mobius strip shelves inside of Rhino with the help of Grasshopper. First of all, I want to download the definition that I wrote in the previous video, and then you will change some of the inputs right here. I will bring it back to the rectangle, and then I will come over here to play with the input a little bit. I'll make it a little bit smaller. I will change this domain all to the same. Maybe this will be a little bit smaller again. Something like this will be great. And then I will come over here to surface, find this thing called deconstruct wrap, find it, select it, and then I will hide everything. So I basically deconstruct this wrap, this poly surface into four different untrimmed surface. And then I'll come over here, use our old friend, list item, find the first, and then index two, and this one is index zero. And then I'll come over here, find a thing called divide domain. I'll bring this surface in, and also I'll bring this surface. Let's bring another tool, which is called ISO trim. I'll bring this surface in, bring this domain, and also I'll bring this surface in and also bring this domain. So what this ISO trim does is it extracts the ISO parametric subset of surfaces, which means that they will divide the surface into different parts based on the input, which are the 2D domain that we're creating here. So they consider the surface both U and V direction as zero to one, and then they will divide this into 10 segments, for example, in this case, and then they will bring those subsets of domain into this input, and then they will trim it out. Those two are friends. We are often going to use them all together. So just keep that in mind. And right here, I don't want too many subdivisions on this direction. So I'm going to decrease that by substitute number to one. And also I want to increase the amount of subdivisions on the U direction. So I will bring in like 120. Now we got something like this. And then I want to select some of the curves, but I want jump select, which means that I want to select this one and have some space in between and then select the next one. Right here, we got 120 different surfaces and we don't want the surface exactly. We just want the edge. So I'll come over here and find this thing called wrap edge, bring it in. And you will find that in each of those surfaces, we have four edges, which makes sense, right? Because they have this rectangular shape. First of all, I want to join all those curves together by using this tool called Join Curves. Now I get 120 locally defined values, which makes sense. It's basically 120 rectangles. And then I want to flatten the whole list, got something like this. Same thing right here. I will come over here and bring this in and find the opposite side. And then I'll come over here to list item. I'll bring this in and I will create a series again. For example, right now I want them to keep three spacing in between. So I'll just type in three and then the count wise, it'll be 120 divided by three. So I will create a division here. I'll bring three here and then I'll bring the division number, which is 120. Now, we will get 40 of those selections and I select it. So it will be something like this. If you think this spacing is simply too big, I can change it to six. Remember, it will be nice if you can have a number that will be divided by 120 without any remainders. Okay, of course this number, it can be 120 or 240, doesn't matter, it's totally up to you. And we will get a bunch of curves like this, okay? And then we will repeat this process on the other side of the surface. And now I want to create some sort of loft in between. First, let's do it, loft. In order to make sure that the agony loft in pairs, we have to merge them into different groups. So let's look at the data structure here. Right now it's one list with 20 items inside. And right here, also one list with 20 items inside. And when we loft them, we want them to have 20 sublists. And each of those 20 sublists has two items. And those two items can loft to each other, right? That's our logic. And in order to do that, we have to first graph them. And if we graph them, 
each of the item will have its own list, right, right here also. And then if we merge them together, right, this is previous, and after merge, we will have 20 lists, and each of those lists has two items, okay? This is exactly what we want. And then we loft it, right? You will see that this kind of mismatch because basically those rectangles has been rotated. So basically we want to rotate one side of the rectangles for 180 degree. Thankfully, the solution can be much easier. Uh, we can simply flip those curves, see if it will work. So I'll come over here, choose flip curve. And if it doesn't, we have some other ways to do so. So we will plug it in. It's still not quite working. That's because the starting point on each of the curve is not the same. So I will just go ahead and come over here. Remember, we divide them into four different segments earlier by using this thing called Brap Edge. So I can just come up with a shift list tool, bring it in, plug it in, and then I'll type number, let's say two. Let's test it out. Still not working. Number one, not working. Zero, definitely not working. And three is the solution. So now we got it. And then I will just come over here. You can see that we can change all kinds of inputs inside here. We can change the amount of divisions you want to have in between, right? If you increase it and the, the steps in between remain the same as six. So those panels will be thinner, and but we will have more of those. And if we decrease the number here, and then we decrease the steps to three, so we basically doubled the amount of panels in between. So let's stick with six and then I'll bake them. And also those two surfaces that I just selected earlier, I can also bake them. I'll offset the surface. And also I'll offset this surface, but this time I have to flip the surface and then I'll get something like this. I'll group them, we'll get a shelf like this. And of course you can change the period. Right here is three. We can change it to two. We'll get something like this. And also you can change it to one, which is something like this. Keep going. We can do four and then bake it. Again, the group. And also we can come over here, bake those surfaces. And if I, offset this surface, some mistake will happen. Again, that's because the starting point match with its ending point and also some other algorithm issue. There is a very easy way to solve this problem. We can simply use a curve, a random curve to cut it. So we split the surface with this curve and we got two different surfaces. And then if we offset those surfaces, and then we can group them together and then we got it. And again, as you can see, we can have all kinds of inputs here and you are more than welcome to download this definition and play with your own ideas. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to see you in our next tutorial.